What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out WWE's new age of complex characters. Now, I have been talking about this um, since Triple H has taken over in creative, how characters now, they have more layers to them than just being a bad guy or a good guy there's there's reasonings that make sense i don't know if you guys have paid attention but a lot of the heel terms that we've seen so far they make sense they're justified because of a person having some type of previous gripe with somebody else now is it going a little bit overboard in how they approach it yes but in good storytelling the villain a good compelling villain believes they are the hero in their own story and a lot of these situations like we've seen with drew mcintyre and how he's been presented with his hatred of the bloodline and his hatred of cm punk you kind of understand why did he go a little bit too far of course praying for someone's injury it's kind of fucked up but you understand going on why things happen the same thing with kevin owens you understand why he has this this hatred now for cody and randy especially cody for him helping roman reigns the guy he's been feuding with for a very long time the bloodline he hates them so it makes sense so i can appreciate those complex layers or characters that they've added to wrestlers now they're not just oh i just want to be bad just because to be bad they have a reason behind it so we're gonna check this out appreciate all love support man let's get right into it bro Shout out to Super uh, Kick Studios, man. WWE's bread and butter has always been their storytelling. Whether it's as simple as Good Meets Evil, David vs. Goliath, or long-form tales like The Chase of Championship Glory, An Underdog vs. The Administration Chronicle, The Story of One Upsmanship, or A Love Triangle. But the one thing that hasn't been as consistent as today's WWE is the inner turmoil of the characters who bring these stories to life. Looking up and down the roster, you see nuanced characters that have a fantastic level of depth to them. Some unable to let go of the past, others trying to break free of what they once were, and some just straight up becoming everything that they once despised. Mm -hmm. The wrestling business for years has had so many different characters that you can go back and analyze. From supernatural beings like The Undertaker, to everyman crowd favorites like Stone Cold Steve Austin, and even master manipulators like Edge. When you look at some of the larger than life characters over the years from colossal giants to mystical freaks, the hardest thing to do is humanize a wrestling character. How do you make someone who's superhuman relatable? You give them personality traits, jealousy, psychological trauma, justification for their actions over the course of harm imposed to their character. Mm -hmm. Because after all, a character needs to be relatable and have human traits. When you true. look at today's WWE, the complexity and depth to modern day characters stands out so much more than ever before. The company has made it a priority to take the whole gravity of the show into account where things have taken place over the course of months, years, and in select cases, decades. Yeah. The company has also made the move to serialize storytelling, meaning that things aren't contained to a few episode bubble before a character completely changes. For example, something so simple that happened in October of the previous year could prove to be important five months down the line as you get a glimpse of what the character is thinking. This is twofold. Now in the WWE, we're able to understand what the character has been going through for the past little bit, and there's continuity with long-term stories. Yeah. Rarely in the 2010s were you able to sit back and analyze a character's motivations. Occasionally, you get a masterclass like Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker where you could go back and see why Shawn was doing what he was doing, why Shawn was driven to insanity and obsessed with closure and could only achieve that by throwing everything away and mm -hmm. doing everything in his power Power to get to the undertaker not gonna lie to y'all this is still one of the best stories that wwe has produced this obsession with hbk wanting to end the undertaker streak it was really good it was some long-term uh, uh long-term storytelling um they these guys have had history since like the 90s so it was really dope to see them actually put this in the forefront it was really good. It was one of those things where WWE, they would have some gems in the sea of bullshit. And this was one of those gems. 
even if it meant corrupting his morals. Now these characters with different personalities are more prevalent than ever. There's always more to every story and the brilliant part is everything is open to interpretation and you actually have to pay attention in the long run. These characters more than any other era are commonplace. Let's take a look at some of the recent examples and also dive into arcs that may not have started just yet. I'll never forgive you for what you did to us. Uh-oh. Roman Reigns. I hate you. This when this good. era is romanticized really 10, 15 years down the line and TV producers do the deep dive on when these deep-rooted characters became the norm, this is the image that will air in those documentaries. Roman Reigns berating Jey Uso, using superficial sympathy, a phony attitude of trying to help him, and gaslighting to get Jey to do his dirty work. And this is why I said what we saw on Monday Night Raw, um, not Monday Night Raw, on SmackDown, where Jay confronts Roman and he basically stands up for himself after all the years of the mistreatment. That's why I said it was cinema, because everything played out. Long term storytelling played out and we got what we always wanted Jay to finally do, stand up for himself. That's why I say that with cinema. I don't normally use that word because it does get overused. But in this context, it is. We've seen a character arc in Jay overcome his abusive family member. And then the abusive family member had to realize he was the problem. He knew he was the problem, but he played it off like he was the one with the solution. Love it. And fall in line. What came to the forefront in this was Jay's underlying suppression of never being seen as his own man. Always a twin and never able to win. They pulled back the curtain and told us that he wanted to make his family proud and the spotlight had been taken away from Jay since he was a kid. This is where you meet two of the company's deepest characters, but I want to focus on Roman. Why is Roman a bad guy in the first place? The deep roots extend to his inability to let things go. The character of Roman Reigns through mm -hmm. his time never betrays anyone. He just treats everyone very poorly. When he trusts, he gets hurt all yep. over again. But what was the turn and dominance a construct of? It's a construct of the betrayal of the shield mm -hmm. and how that recurring chair shot continues to be his downfall every single time. The boogeyman that- And we saw it once again, great storytelling at WrestleMania. He couldn't let it go. He saw Seth, he saw Seth in the shield gear. He had the chair. He had the opportunity to end Cody Rhodes, but he couldn't let it go. And it cost him the most his hatred for seth betraying him cost him the most in the end that's perfect that he just can't <laughs> overcome seth hitting roman with the chair split the group and sent roman on his own path which he wasn't ready for that ended up bringing Roman the most mentally taxing time of his mm -hmm. career, trying to be a good guy and getting humiliated wherever he went to the point where he had to change his ways and rule by absolute fear. The thought process being that his adopted brothers turned on him, but his actual family never would. So he slowly built his own version of the shield, a yeah. shield in more ways than one, using that as his safety blanket, and then beating every legend to cement himself as the best version of himself. But if you really look at things, his view is skewed. He thinks that he needs to rule through fear when everyone in the family already respected him. Eventually, it was the guy who set him on this path of destruction who deeply hurt him so much that caused everything to come crumbling down. Yep. Roman's got creative control of his character, and if you wind the clock back to Royal Rumble 2022, he couldn't beat Seth. Yeah. He could beat anyone. Seemingly everyone in his path he could beat with great ease, but this one person had his number. He yeah. was reminded of the group he held closest to him and mm -hmm. got his closure by destroying Seth with the aforementioned steel chair. Let go of him, man. That's enough. That's I'm enough. Not... Hey, he won't allow me to let go. He won't allow let me. Go. Wind the clock forwards Good to stuff, WrestleMania bro. 40 night two. With 1,316 days of dominance in the books, when presented with the option of retention or retaliation, the wound a decade later hadn't healed and the ghost of Seth Rollins came back 
costing Roman everything. everything yep. It's not like a decade beforehand, this was the end game, that Roman would have this historic title reign and it would come to an end in this fashion. But the company went back and they made the connect to things that had happened in the mm -hmm. past. The complexity of the Tribal Chief character also comes down to this new iteration, the original Tribal Chief. When he came back, everyone was under the assumption that because of the circumstances, he would be a de facto good guy. But Reigns himself said that he wasn't a changed man. Yeah. He's not a lot of the same tendencies, checking up on materialistic items instead of helping out his family that comes to his aid. He can't automatically- Yeah, he's not the de facto, oh yeah, man, I'm gonna, you know, hug and kiss the babies and all this other stuff. No, he's still Roman, it's just now, He's more or less on the good guy's side because of other people not wanting Solo as the tribal chief, if that makes any sense, by circumstance. And it works because people weren't going to boo him. They were going to cheer him as soon as he came back. He knows that. He's like a tweener in a sense. Like he's not the he's not morally good for the most part. But at the same time, he's not objectively bad like he once was. He's in that gray area. He's in that gray area where, hell, even Jimmy had to kind of pretty much like, come on, bro. When when uh Cody was getting jumped by the bloodline, the new bloodline, he was like, come on, bro. We got to happen. He was like, bro, that, nah, we, I, I said one time. I, I only agreed to team up with him one time. Jimmy like, come on, bro. We got to help him. And he finally did it. Not because he wanted to as a good guy because he's like, fine, whatever. You know what I'm saying? become a good guy he needs a chapter of healing he was the one who broke up twins and went about things the wrong way he owes the family an apology to prove that he's not the same man the arc of roman getting the band back together could go one of two ways either the whole thing is yet another master plan with roman showing his good side to gain back sole possession as the tribal chief but continuing to manipulate or a complete 180 of who the character is and showing that he has changed. If you really break down things and look at all the subtle little pitfalls the character has, you see just how complex it is. Roman thought that making people fear him was the way to go, and now maybe the character will learn what respect and love can actually do. What we're witnessing is Roman's journey through conflict and how he faced it with brute violence. The mm -hmm. challenge that he's faced in his WWE career and now maybe he's coming out of it on the other end. There is only one man on earth who is uniquely suited to be your shield. Looking the back at the build to WrestleMania. This shit was so good. That was so, man, they cooked. They cooked at this year's WrestleMania, bro. That's such a perfect line. There's only one man that suited it to be your shield and he was his shield. At the end of the day, Seth Rollins still is the MVP of WrestleMania, bro. WrestleMania 40, what's the line that everyone was speculating over? It was when Seth told Cody that he was the only person uniquely suited to be his shield. Did this mean that he was going to turn on him? Did this mean he was going to save him? It ended up being that Seth would sacrifice literally everything, everything. to yeah. destroy what he created. After all, if you look back to the earliest days of Seth Rollins' world title reign, he made it abundantly clear that he hated everything about Roman's championship reign. He hated that he wasn't a fighting champion, he hated how he won his matches, he hated that he was the champion that everyone held in high regard. If you remember when Cody was about to pick Roman for Mania, Seth talked about how the other title, Roman's title, was for posers and frauds and mm -hmm. people who politicked their way to the top. Now listen to this, a few weeks later, the same night that he told Cody that he would be his shield, he said this. You wanted to take everything from him and deep in my soul, I felt that. In the same promo, he said that the man Roman Reigns is, is partly his fault, but he yeah. could have never imagined the monster that he unleashed. Seeing inside of Cody that this was someone who would go to great lengths to do whatever it took to beat Roman. Considering Seth knew firsthand after seeing Rhodes compete with a torn peck a few years beforehand. But he knew that he had the one tool that no one else did. So he stood side by side with Cody. Earlier I said it's interesting to speculate on some of the arcs. You gotta assume that he's got a mega match with CM Punk lined up come WrestleMania sure. 41. But after that, 
in the grand scheme of things, why would Seth Rollins, the man who did it all and lost it all, let Cody Rhodes go? He teamed up with the one person he went out of his way to beat with his body barely clinging on. Plus, there's an unresolved final chapter with Reigns and Rollins. Mm -hmm. These two examples are well linked to each other, but then you come to the most compelling character of the WWE calendar in 2024. I prayed yep. for this and it happened. Yep, I said it, bro. Fucking Drew. <laughs> Drew. Man. The MVP of WrestleMania was definitely Seth Rollins. The MVP of WWE? For sure. Without a shadow of a doubt. It is Drew fucking McIntyre. I don't care what nobody says. This is some of the best stuff he has done in WWE. With there's, n I I can't even think of another time. There's been some good moments, you know, but this consistently he's carried WWE. He's he was doing the best stuff, best promos, best trolling on social media. It was Chef's kiss. It was great. It's easy. Drew, CM Punk, to, I think he's probably going to be the best feud of WWE this year, bro. It's so good. Sometimes you become what you set out to destroy. So good. This is the story of Drew McIntyre, a man who fell into the trap of hypocrisy and over the course of a few months became a reflection of everything he despised. So good. Imagine chasing a career-defining moment and losing, then getting another shot and, and losing, losing, then losing again. You'd start to wonder, is your way of going about things what's really holding you back? Clash at the castle in front of his friends and family, he suffered the biggest loss of his career, and the reason he lost was because of Solo Sokoa, and that would be his villain origin story. Jey Uso made the move to Monday nights, and when you look at things from the perspective of Sami Zayn and Jey Uso, Jey was the good guy in the story, just trying to make his family proud, trying to forge his own identity, but at every single turn, he was manipulated. But to Drew, Jay was public enemy number one because he was once mm -hmm. a part of the bloodline. Yeah. Drew, while not a full out bad guy, was starting to show hints of frustration. Mm -hmm. While guys like Cody, who also lost because of Uso, saw him as a changed man, mm -hmm. Drew didn't. Cast your mind back to 2020. Who was the guy that cost him his champion versus champion match at Survivor yep. Series? Jay had to win back the trust of a lot of guys in the locker room, but Drew was a guy he just could not win over. Yeah. Listen to this line from Michael Cole. Drew McIntyre coming after everyone who wronged him. Drew McIntyre is a bad dude with issues. Drew McIntyre is a bad dude. Weird considering that for four years, Drew had done things the right way. Smile mm -hmm. for a smile, you got my back, I got yours. But it's in this time frame where you start to see the complexity of Drew McIntyre, throwing his morals completely out the window. So good. Drew over the next little bit would continue to tell us what he believes. Not only that the bloodline screwed him out of his moment, but how he believed his moment was always taken away from him. That gave you an avenue into what Drew was truly thinking. You're someone who's had their biggest moment come in front of no one after you did everything mm -hmm. in your power to make it back to the WWE. But despite you thinking that the moment will come, it never does. So you stray away from everything that makes you you and chase that moment no matter what. Yeah. He ended up losing to Seth Rollins at Crown Jewel, but at the same time, you saw him mixing it up with members of the Judgment Day who he aligned with heading into war games. Hypocritical because he was bashing Jay and the Bloodline only to go on and side yeah. with a group causing just as much chaos. It was on this night where CM Punk returned to the WWE after years away and his hatred for Punk would prove to be his demise. At one point, you could see that Drew was shedding off what he felt onto CM Punk, telling him that he's going to crash and burn because Drew had been consistent, maybe in his mind thinking that he's one injury away from never getting to the mountaintop. He later proclaimed himself as CM Punk's leader. Punk and Seth Rollins was the planned matchup, but mm -hmm. at the Rumble, it was Drew who inadvertently injured Punk, going on to take his position as... Just think about that, bro. But think about CM Punk. It's crazy, because CM Punk, once again, is the, the main situation in, in WrestleMania's 30 main event, and then... In WrestleMania's 40 main event, because CM Punk got injured in WrestleMania uh, at the Royal Rumble, 
obviously things had changed. The the match had to be switched up. Like what matches was gonna happen? Same thing at WrestleMania 30. CM Punk left. Daniel Bryan wasn't slated to be in the main event. That's crazy how things happen, and it all kind of revolves around uh, CM Punk in both those WrestleManias. As number one contender, of course, not planned. Now, yet again, Drew had the chance to chase the ultimate moment. Earlier, I said that he became what he wanted to destroy. Well, remember how Solo helped Roman win? Solo caused an interference in a McIntyre Rhodes match, and Drew did exactly what he hated others for doing. The textbook definition for hypocrite is a person mm -hmm. who claims or pretends to have certain beliefs about what is right, but who behaves uh -huh. in a way that disagrees with those beliefs. Well, once again in this video, WrestleMania 40 proves to be important. In the buildup, Drew consistently told Seth Rollins to focus or else he'd lose it all, considering that he was busy with Rock, Roman, and Cody. And it was because of how beat up Seth Rollins was from the night beforehand that helped Drew get the ultimate victory and finally achieve his moment. Drew mm -hmm. was correct that his focus was somewhere else, but it was actually Drew who wasn't focused on this. No. Nope. He finally had everything he ever wanted. He finally got his- Bro, he got a good, man, crowd went crazy. That was a good moment for Drew. Even Seth, you can see Seth saying, you deserve it, bro. Like that, that mutual respect, it was a beautiful moment. And he couldn't help himself. Drew screwed Drew. <laughs> moment only to take his eye off the prize. Instead of soaking in the biggest moment of his career, he went to show off the title to CM Punk, who ended up being the reason that he lost the championship. Damian Priest came out to cash in, and that was the yep. end. Punk oh was God. provoked by McIntyre, making this statement the first time the two met even more important. I'm not a demon. When pushed, I'm Satan himself. Yeah. Well, Punk was pushed and over the next yep. little while became the biggest thorn in Drew's <laughs> side that you could imagine. Costing him every opportunity, yep. making sure he didn't come anywhere near that title. And in the process, Drew multiple times over did things that he proclaimed to be against. And this character wasn't just one of these people so who was good. disrespecting the crowd all the time. No. During this transformation, he was actually high-fiving fans. He wasn't taking... And that's the... I'm glad he pointed that out. If you guys remember, he was still high-fiving fans. He was still trying to show love to the fans. At some point, he eventually, he's like, every time y'all chant CM Punk, he, he started to despise them. But it wasn't like, oh, he just became a bad guy. No. He thinks he's the good guy in his story. That's what makes this so good. Jabs at how awful they were all the time. His slow change in demeanor made sense. He had justification for what he was doing. And if you want to talk about guys who have justification for what they're doing. I should have been on top of the world. And we instead go. what I got was people telling me, you don't deserve to be the champion. The only reason you won the title is because of Triple H. Wind the clock back to the October 13th, 2023 episode of SmackDown. Nick Aldis announces that Cody Rhodes was instrumental in bringing Jey Uso to Monday nights, and in exchange, a Raw superstar would come to SmackDown. That ended up being Kevin Owens, and on Raw, Owens Love talked about how Kevin the locker room Owens. didn't want Jay on their show. Owens was visibly upset that Cody brought Jay over, with him asking Cody, why? Why would he bring over a person who Owens fought wars against? Why would he essentially turn his back on the entire roster by bringing such a disturbance to the room? Mm -hmm. Cody said that he brought Jay over because uh -oh. he deserved a second chance. In this promo, Sammy, Kevin's longtime best friend, said that Owens takes longer to warm up to people. And you really saw the depth of Kevin Owens who didn't forgive and didn't yeah. forget. Going on to tell Sammy that Jay was the reason he didn't walk out of Elimination Chamber as champion. Jay was also the reason that Cody didn't walk out of uh -huh. WrestleMania as champion. Uh -huh. Remembering what had previously happened over the course of years on WWE yeah. TV. This simple October segment has so much weight to it because Owens tells us something very important. He doesn't trust Jay, but he does trust both Sammy and Cody. And Keep this is why it's so fucking good that now... He doesn't trust them. Well, at least on Cody's side of things. Once Kevin Owens sees Sammy, and I'm sure, he, I hope he brings it up, Sammy helping the bloodline. Oh, that's why I say I think we are going to get a Sammy versus Kevin Owens match. We got to. 
shit's gonna be fire keep in mind the wwe At title is something of course. that's evaded kevin owens for so long and what i believe is the central point of all of this and what makes this so interesting is kevin owens at one time was the most sadistic cold yeah. and calculated version of himself yes because if you remember at one time he was the prize fighter I think when you look at this arc, it's actually quite genuine. It's about Owens trying to be a good person, trying to let go of the evil man that he once was and stick up for his friends. But a variety of factors, including his trust being broken by said friends, is what led him to quote unquote turning heel. Mm -hmm. Heading into Bash in Berlin, you saw the slow callbacks to prize fighter Owens, yeah. looking at the WWE title just like he did to championships in 2015, uh -huh. thinking about pulling the trigger, but then thinking better of things, giving Cody Rhodes the benefit of the doubt. Because I want you all to remember, post and pre-WrestleMania, Kevin was helping Cody fend off the bloodline. Yeah. And remember how earlier I said that Sammy said that Owens was slow to trust people? In this, he built a friendship with Randy Orton. Yeah. Someone who in his heyday was just as much of a killer as Kevin Owens was. He let Orton in, he trusted him, and the two shared a bond. Spending all this time fighting that group, you can imagine how someone would feel to see the man that they gave the benefit of the doubt to teaming up with the enemy. The breaking point. This is why this is so good. Oh my God, bro. They're cooking right now. Came at bad blood when Cody teamed with Roman Reigns. Then that was it. Kevin could not see that. This was the final straw before Owens attacked Cody with the show already being off air. So good. This adds to the gravity of it. The first place Owens found Cody, he let it all out. In his eyes, Cody betrayed him after his body took so much punishment to fend off his mortal enemy. This rage also led to him breaking his friendship with Randy Orton, one of the few deep bonds that he shared in the company. When you look at the parallels between Owens and Orton, you really see why this dynamic worked. Two men who share qualities of ruthlessness but have suppressed that in order to become better versions of themselves. Mm -hmm. Now just imagine how Owens will feel when he sees A, the bloodline with Jey Uso back to its most volatile form on his show and B, his best friend, the man that he was reluctant to go Just back to pre-WrestleMania 39, back with the group that he's been fighting. This is, like I said, bro, they are cooking, bro. And I'm glad he said this. I just said this. Wait till he sees the fact that Sammy's helping them again. He's going to crash out even more. This feud, even though we've seen it before, it's going to be even better because of the story dynamics. Once again, I've said this. These guys main evented WrestleMania 39 together. They, they took down the Usos together. And just a few years later, them going to be at each other's throats at WrestleMania. This is a few made for WrestleMania. I hope they, they build up to it. Oh, my God. They're cooking. Off for years. Owen's character, much like Drew, is justified with his reasoning. But what about his buddy Randy Orton? Where does that go? I will always and forever have your back. Oh. You know this. Oh, Listen boy. to this simple line from Triple H. I am not protecting Kevin Owens. I am trying to protect you. Who knows Randy Orton the best? It's Triple H, the guy who saw Orton kill every legend in his path. The guy who handpicked Orton to be a part of Evolution. The guy who literally saw one of the most destructive wrestlers of Ever. all time. Triple H now having a different role says he's protecting Orton from himself because he sees that similar to Owens, he's become a good friend and a good person. How this relates to Triple H not letting Randy fight Kevin Owens is maybe he sees Owens as the guy that'll help Randy realize that it was Cody who broke up a bond. Maybe it's Kevin that'll make Orton blood hungry again. Mm -hmm. Randy and Cody have a history dating back yep. to their time in Legacy, and over the course of Orton's career, he's always been on the pursuit of championship glory. Multiple factors could be in place to have Orton slowly turn on Cody. Remembering his desire to be champion again yeah. could be one. Maybe seeing that one of the few friends he had and held in high regard was taken away from him because of Cody. Also seeing that Cody shared a moment with the bloodline at Bad Blood. Orton, another man that's gone through wars with said team. You don't know what it feels like to have to fight. Can't wait for that Cody and uh and 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 Randy Orton feud. Mm. 
please, bro. I hope it happens at WrestleMania, bro. For everything you have. Before wrapping up, I wanted to take a look at a more simple example of a character growing in the company. Damien Priest had one of the most simple yet effective stories in recent times. Mm -hmm. Bringing someone from faction to top star and from bad guy to good guy with a simple premise. If you look back to Damien Priest's time in the Judgment Day, you see a man who is influenced by those around him, wanting to cheat, calling for help, and undermining opponents. After he won the World Heavyweight Championship, he slowly started to yep. ask for Finn and Dom to stay away and let him handle business on his own. Gaining that was his character change. Once he won it, he wanted to, he wanted to defend it on his own. He wanted to be a fighting champion that didn't rely on the help of others. That was his character change, which I can appreciate. In confidence in his ability as champion, which was twofold. He started to grow into his own entity, but it made people within the group feel like he had different intentions and didn't care for them anymore. The Priest character was then humanized to a larger scale by using things that had actually happened in his life beforehand as the backstory heading into SummerSlam 2024. And sometimes it's very simple. If you quickly want to look at a different example, take Sami Zayn and Gunther into account. That took weeks to build because on the surface we could say that yeah, Gunther's not one of these deeply layered characters, but why'd he keep saying no to Sami's challenge for a world title match? Over and over, the guys beat down everyone. Why not give Sami a chance? Well, because at WrestleMania, Gunther started toying with his opponent, uh -huh. took Sami lightly, and that in turn led to the demise of his championship reign. Uh -huh. So it's that underlying fear that he masqueraded as Sami not being worthy of having a world championship yep. match. Of course, these are characters and examples that I've cherry picked, but there's a lot more of these throughout the roster, but you gotta pay attention to the subtle hints. Now, not every character has these deep-rooted good and bad guy stories, and I really like that. You need some of those classic wrestling characters. Of course. They really, really cannot die away. You can't have everyone be so deep-rooted because then some won't understand it. If you take a look at things big picture, you see similar characters that have over-marinated and the trigger isn't pulled with them. Take Chad Gable post-WrestleMania 40, for example. There are some stories that go on for way way too long and there is a such thing as too slow of a slow burn yeah. which i'm sure a lot of you guys have also felt in any case loyalty jealousy betrayal wanting to better yourself all of these things have been prevalent in the company and the world of wrestling for many many years but in today's wwe the focus on having deep rooted characters is more prevalent than ever hey man this was good bro this is definitely good. I'm going to go ahead and give this one a like, bro, because Superkick Studios, they never miss when it comes to these type of videos, man. He was spot on with everything he said. I agreed with pretty much everything he said here about WWE and their new age of complex, char complex characters. I love what they're doing with them. And this was fantastic. Comment down below. Let me know. Um, what was What's your favorite, I guess, wrestling character right now like your favorite character art that you've seen in the past since triple h is taking over is it drew mcintyre and his descent to madness is it kevin owens and his resentment for the bloodline um is it jay uso's character art for being someone that was pretty much manipulated by roman reigns to being his own man is it roman reigns himself the guy that once ruled with fear and now is trying to overcome that and rule with compassion and, and love for his family like let me know which character arc and characters y'all have liked so far since triple h has taken over in creative but i appreciate all love support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace